Hi everyone. I'd just quickly like to thank Rob for creating a platform like this for uh, researchers like myself to share our findings. And I'd also like to thank my co-authors on the paper. So just briefly, it's important for the reader or listener to consider with velocity-based training, there's a strong inverse linear relationship between load and velocity. And this means that if maximum effort is given on the concentric phase of a lift, then heavier loads can't be lifted with the same velocity as lighter loads. And this is known as the load-velocity relationship. Now when you assess this for an individual athlete, they may produce different velocities compared to other, ath other athletes with the same relative loads. And this can be due to anatomical differences in limb lengths or fiber type expression. Uh, therefore, you need to create an individualized load velocity profile for each athlete. For this particular paper, we had two main concepts that we wanted to look at when we were developing a load velocity profile. The first of which was to assess whether the concentric velocities used to develop the load velocity profiles were reliable between three sessions in the same week, and also at which relative intensities was it reliable. This was to determine which type of velocity and at what relative intensities could be used to develop load velocity profiles. The second main concept was to determine the magnitude of variation in the three movement velocities between sessions. So basically, if you're a coach, how much normal variation in movement velocity is there before you can say your athlete is fatigued or getting stronger? Just briefly, the study design, uh, we tested 18 strength trained males whose 1RM was about 142 kilos or 313 pounds in the old language, and this equated to about 1.75 times their body mass. We tested their baseline 1RM on the previous Friday, and then they performed three more 1RMs, one on the Monday, one on a Wednesday, and then one on a Friday. So this was done 48 hours uh, between sessions. The lifting uh, intensities we tested were at 20%, 40, 60, 80, 90, and 100% 1RM. And lastly, the, the three concentric velocities that we measured were peak velocity, mean propulsive velocity and mean velocity, which I'll refer to as PV, MPV and MV from now on. So the key findings were that PV was reliable for every relative load we tested, whereas MPV and MV were reliable for all relative loads except for 100% 1RM. How we established that was by creating an acceptable zone of reliability, which is anything inside the shaded area, which included an ICC of anything equal to or greater than 0.7, a CV percentage at or below 10%, and a small or trivial effect size, so anything at or below 0.59. This figure shows the individual and group mean results for the three velocities at 1RM between the three 1RM trials. As you can see, the group mean results were almost exactly the same for each velocity between the trials, but for MPV and MV, there was huge variation for individuals between trials. And this was even though the 1RM for each participant was extremely stable, about 2.5% 1RM variation between the sessions. So this shows the importance of reporting individual data as well as the group mean results. This table here shows how much normal variation or the smallest detectable difference in movement velocity there is before you can say an athlete is fatigued or getting stronger. So the velocity would need to improve or decline by these amounts to be sure that there is fatigue or they are getting stronger. So some limitations for this study, um, one of which if you're developing a load velocity profile for the back squat using MPV or MV, uh, if you're training with velocities at relative loads greater than 90%, then they might not be reliable. Therefore, if an athlete is training at near maximal relative loads, then load velocity profiles utilizing MPV and MV might be problematic. Another limitation is even though the three movement velocities are reliable in the back squat, this doesn't necessarily mean that the velocity is stable in other free weight exercises. So future studies should seek to investigate load velocity profiling for each exercise performed by their athletes. So the practical applications if you're looking to utilize load velocity profiles to train an individual in the free weight back squat, first of all, you perform a 1RM assessment. Then you conduct an individualized load velocity profile assessment with the exact lifting loads from the 1RM. And you can use PV, MPV, or MV. You then plot the load against the velocity and fit a linear regression line of best fit. You use the subsequent equation to convert a relative intensity table into a movement velocity table like so. And here we have an example of a mean velocity table. You then use their baseline velocity from the individualized load velocity profile and adjust their training load for that particular session 
if their velocities are higher or lower than their target velocity according to the smallest detectable difference. Thanks very much for listening. Uh, you can find me on Twitter um, and you can also read this article and my other publications on ResearchGate. Cheers.